welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin and this is Catnip Dreams of Food. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, you have stumbled on the series Food History with Catnip and this is, I believe, the sixth episode. Yes, I think it's, the, it's either the fifth or the sixth episode. I can't remember. Yeah, so essentially what we do, or what I do I guess, is I use this globe right behind me. At the end of each episode I spin the globe and I choose either a country or a region and I take the entire week to thoroughly research the food history and food culture of that region. I choose a dish to prepare and then I share that with you guys. Hi puppy. <laughs> Just a puppy interruption. Also it's way too hot for a flannel. So yeah, thank you guys so much for coming. If you're new to the channel and you're new to this series, please make sure to like and subscribe and follow my Instagram, Catnip Dreams of Food. It's Egan. <laughs> so I'm sitting on the ground. I changed my filming area. I got new lighting and Egan keeps coming over because I'm sitting on the ground, so I'm sorry. The region that I chose for this episode, or today's episode I should say, is Hawaii. So obviously it's part of the United States, but I thought that First of all, Hawaii has a very unique food history and food culture, which you'll see in this episode. And, I don't know, I've been to Hawaii, I really wanted to show some of my pictures from my honeymoon, so... And, uh, yeah, I'm just excited to talk about it. So Hawaii is located in the Pacific Ocean, it's part of the Polynesian Triangle, which multiple islands make up this area. So they're made up of eight major islands, but there are other islands that make up Hawaii as well. I've been to Maui and it's amazing. It's so beautiful. The terrain is very interesting in Hawaii because, you know, being an island and being surrounded by the ocean, obviously there's lots of beaches, but at least from my experience in Maui, there were, it was a very large, like almost mountain. And it was, it's a really interesting Place. So I'm just gonna get into kind of the timeline that I normally do for all of these episodes. So the Hawaiian Islands, now the date definitely varies from source to source, which I, pretty much is with any of my videos because there's so many sources to look at. So it's thought that Hawaii was first inhabited between 100 CE and 400 CE. And the first wave of people came from the, were Polynesian people that came from the Marquesas Islands. And then the second wave of people, which was around 1000 CE, would be people from Tahiti. So those are the two waves of people that came to the Hawaiian Islands, and it should be said that Hawaii, the Hawaiian Islands didn't have any native animals to the island that would be really consumed. Obviously seafood would be very plentiful. There were about 300 varieties of fish right off the coast of Hawaii. And then the people from the Marquesas Islands and then from Tahiti brought with them sweet potatoes and taro, bananas, coconut, breadfruit, pig, chicken, mango, papaya, pineapple, guava. So these are some of the items that were very early on before European settlers came that were consumed by the people that lived on the island. And there were multiple different groups of people that lived on the Hawaiian Islands before James Cook did come to Hawaii and it wasn't until so in 1778 James Cook first arrived on the Hawaiian Islands and for one year there was a really positive trade relationship between the people that were native to the Hawaiian Islands as well as the Europeans that came but in 1779 that completely and drastically changed so some of the people from the Hawaiian Islands did try to steal one of James Cook's boats and when he caught wind of that, he tried to capture the leader of the Hawaiian people and they actually ended up um, executing James Cook. So that didn't create a very good relationship, but with that being said, the people from the Hawaiian Islands that were kind of living in different, in different groups all united together under one king, and I apologize if I pronounce this wrong, Kamehameha. Like I said, I'll, I'll spell it. And he was considered to be the best leader that the Hawaiian Islands ever had and he reigned and helped bring the people together. When the Europeans did come to the islands, they did bring with them carrots, potatoes, and beef. The Europeans that arrived in Hawaii completely devastated the population, mainly due to disease that was brought to Hawaii that the people were not immune to. So the population went from about 300,000 when Europeans first arrived in Hawaii and to about 24,000 by 1920. And skipping very far ahead in time, but in 1880 to about, to about 1930, there was a huge rise in sugarcane plantations. So with that being said, people from all different countries, including China, Japan, Korea, the Philippines, as well as Puerto Rico, all came to Hawaii. So with that being said, a huge influx of different ingredients and cuisine and culture were all brought to the Hawaiian Islands, and it really became a melting pot as it is today with current cuisine. 
and this is really important to the food culture in Hawaii. Some other ingredients that were brought to the Hawaiian Islands, this is actually from American Influence, and that would include Spam and corned beef, and you'll, when I went to Hawaii, Spam was in a lot of dishes still, and you know what, I was, I was okay with it. So I mean, which was one of the dishes that I asked you guys if you'd be interested if I would make, is a dashi broth, so there's that Japanese influence, and it has, I think it was a wheat noodle with fish cakes and then Spam on top, and I believe eggs as well, and it was very delicious, and I was kind of hoping that everybody would vote for that dish, but did not, and that's okay. And currently it's agreed that there are two major types of cuisine that that are present in Hawaii. The first would be would be Hawaiian food, and this generally means the food that is very traditional of uh, people that are native to the Hawaiian Islands. So some of the things that would be included would be poi, which is taro root, which is roasted in an underground pit, and then it is with water into this kind of gummy paste, and that is very traditional, suckling pig. The whole idea of a luau, and I know that it's, when we think of luau's, we think of like hula dancing, but a luau is supposed to be a very traditional pe feast that traditionally has a suckling pig. And the other style of food cuisine would be called local food, and this is a complete melting pot of different cultures, and that can include European influence, Philippine influence, American influence, Japanese influence, Korean influence, Chinese influence. It's so many different cultures that come together and use all these ingredients that we've seen through all of these videos that are being transformed based on the influence of the people around them. And so when I was in Hawaii, my absolute favorite chef of all time is Chef Sheldon Simeon, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, and I believe he said that his grandparents are from the Philippines, but he's grown up in Maui his whole entire life, and his restaurant Tin Roof Maui had the best food I've ever had, and I'll put some pictures in right here. So mochiko fried chicken, and mochiko refers to the sweet rice flour that the chicken is marinated in, and it had this sweet miso sauce that I think had some citrus, and then a gochujang aioli, and I think it was on top of white rice with napa cabbage, and then furikake, which is I think bonito flakes with seaweed and sesame seeds, and it is the best dish. I've recreated it multiple times, and I've gotten it pretty close, but you know, it. It's the best dish I've ever had, best thing I ever ate, and I want to go back to Maui just to eat it, so best dish. And then I also tried Saimin, which is that dish that I was talking about, which is the dashi broth with the noodles, and it was a little bit sweet, a little bit savory, and the Spam on top actually really worked because the nice saltiness went really well with the dashi broth, and I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Some other dishes that we had, I'm trying to think. There was a tuna poke, and I'm trying to remember this, so I'll put the pictures in after. But we had tuna poke, and I believe poke just means fish, or tuna, it's, it's fish. So it's large pieces of fish that are cut up, and they're generally mixed in some type of soy-based sauce that can be slightly sweet, and sometimes you'll see variations of like spicy mayonnaise and different things, but generally it's fish over top of some rice or a green base. And it also had the furikake seasoning on it, and it's amazing. I love poke, it's also one of my favorite dishes, because I like that there's a mix of this kind of saltiness, the sweetness, and this fresh, just delicious fish. And we had poke in multiple places, but I would say the, play the stuff from Tin Roof was the absolute best. We also went to a restaurant, Star Noodle, which is the restaurant when I believe that Chef Sheldon, I think he was the executive chef at the time when you went for the first season of Top Chef. I'm nerding out. But there we had ramen and we had another version of the Siamine and it was delicious. Another thing that you'll see that's very common is called the plate lunch, and this generally describes two scoops of rice with a protein that's kind of prepared in soy and maybe like an Asian inspired sauce, cabbage, kimchi, and then either mac salad or potato salad. And uh, another dish that I've seen a lot is the one I'm actually going to make today, and it's loco moco. And this is white rice that is topped with a basically a burger patty and then a gravy with mushrooms and sweet onions and a fried egg. And we're gonna make that today, and I'm gonna make it for Tim because it sounds a little too rich for me, but I'll, I'll try some. And because of the Filipino influence, I definitely saw adobo a lot when I was in Hawaii, and I, I actually didn't try it when I was there, and I made it for the Philippines episode. So definitely a lot of influence from around the world, a lot of use of fresh seafood, like the poke. So. I think this episode on Hawaii was very, really interesting because it was great to be able to talk about a culture or be able to talk about a food history that I've actually been able to try firsthand. And uh, I think it's time for cooking. So we're gonna go make that loco moco that I was telling you about. <laughs>
so we have the rice on the bottom. I didn't show you guys plating it. I, I don't know why. But I have the rice on the bottom, the two burger patties, the nice mushroom and onion gravy, and the fried egg and firakake on top. Looks pretty good. This is for Tim. It's a little too rich for me, but looks pretty good. All right guys, so we're nearing the end of the episode, so it's time to pick our country or region using our globe technique. All right, I feel like every time I do this, I hit the ocean like 20 times, which makes sense because the ocean makes most of the earth. Why am I telling you this? Okay. All right, I chose Mongolia. Pretty excited about that. We talked a little bit about Mongolia when we researched, or when I researched the Russian, the episode on Russian cuisine and culture. So pretty excited about this one. I don't really know anything about Mongolian food or Mongolian cuisine, so that'll be a really, it'll be a fun one to research. Thank you guys again for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a little bit shorter than the previous ones, but you know, in comparison, Hawaii is just a little bit smaller of a country, or not country, Hawaii is a state as opposed to the countries that I've been researching in the previous episodes. But thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week, or this week, I guess, for my episode on Mongolia. Thanks. Mm -hmm.